Today I want to talk about The Flash. Now The Flash is one of my favorite superheroes ever, like probably top 10. Particularly Wally West, as I think that Wally West is the most powerful Flash there is. He's just, he's gotta be. He's the fucking fastest man alive. I know Jay Garrick and Barry Allen were the first guys, but when it comes to Wally West, he outranks them, like, without question. The dude's just on a whole nother level of mastering the speed force, and he can even create his drip just solely from the speed force. I mean, how fucking rad is that? And I have a lot of favorite stories featuring Wally West, but one that I love that is so unequivocally bussing is a story where Wally West manipulates the speed force on one particular person to freeze them in place forever. During Wally West's time as the Flash, people thought he had died at some point, but he was really just off on the sidelines for a little bit. And in place of this, Bart Allen took the place of the Flash to fill in Wally's shoes. Now, when Bart Allen became the Flash, he was kind of in over his head as he tried to take on several villains all at once, but ended up getting shafted. And when Wally West came back, oh boy, there was hell to pay for the fucking guy who killed Bart Allen. And today I want to talk about it because it's one of the best Wally West comic book moments ever made. So let's talk about it real quick. As we start the story, Wally West is blitzing through the streets of Los Angeles looking for the murderer of Bart Allen, saying to himself that he is the fastest man alive, but he still feels too slow. Recollecting that he got his super speed back in grade school, and he grew up alongside Barry Allen, the Flash before him, and that about midway through his adult career as the Flash, he would meet Impulse, Bart Allen, the grandson of Barry Allen, recalling that Bart Allen was flaky, unpredictable, and otherwise impulsive. But over the years of Wally mentoring Impulse, he would grow into himself and become a greater hero than he ever imagined. And when Wally West was away for some time, Bart would inherit the title of the Flash. Because in Wally West's mind, that's what the Flashes do. They run their race, then pass the baton to the next guy. But Wally West always thought he'd come back just to check up on Bart, not to catch his killer as he races through the Hollywood Hills. Flashback to an hour prior, Wally West is trying to save his family while being sucked into the Speed Force. After being sucked through the Speed Force, they'd be transported back to Earth only to look up to the Justice League. As at this time, the Justice League was following up on a case about the Speed Force looking for Wally West. So after Wally West and his family collect themselves, Wally introduces his kids to Superman. With Wally and his family reunited, with the Justice League, everything seems to be honky dory Until Green Lantern gets a call from Batman bearing bad news about something that happened in Los Angeles considering the rogues and Bart Allen. Cut to Los Angeles, all of the rogues are looking over the dead body of Bart Allen as his loved ones are just in total shock. As Iris West Allen turns around to the rogues with tears in her eyes, telling them all that they murdered her grandson. Upon hearing that Bart Allen is dead, they all start to freak out because they just killed a kid. And Captain Colt is like, shut up, just shut up, like, let me think for just one second, goddamn. As the rogues begin to point fingers at Inertia, blaming him for the entire thing. And Inertia is just like, y you all got caught up in the moment, it happens. <laughs> but while Inertia is trying to justify his actions to the rogues, the rogues begin to attack Inertia. And they actually end up standing a significant chance trapping him. However, they're not that good as Inertia breaks free from their traps using the powers of the Speed Force, telling the losers to never touch him. Once Inertia would run away scot-free, some of the rogues would start to freak out even more because they literally just killed like one of the most important superheroes ever and some of the rogues think to kill Bart Allen's loved ones so to not have any witnesses. But Pied Piper reaches out and says that's overkill so they just end up teleporting away. Cut to Inertia after killing Bart Allen, he starts to freak out himself thinking that he should call maybe somebody like Deathstroke. But while running through Los Angeles, he hears on a nearby radio that a huge tornado is coming through Los Angeles, looking behind him to see a huge red spiraling tornado coming after him, as Wally West slams into Inertia with anger in his heart. And with literally no time to think, Inertia at first thinks that it's Bart Allen holding him by the costume. But with tears in Wally West's eyes as he runs all across the world in atto seconds, Inertia realizes that it's Wally holding him right now. Wally West, so full of anger, runs across across the world multiple times, blasting through train carts and finding himself in Antarctica, saying to himself that he's mainlining the speed force in a way he never has before. Holding inertia in his hands, he tells himself that he can drain the speed force right out of him. As inertia finally realizes how he actually killed Bart Allen, Wally Weston asks how what happened, to which inertia would say Bart's powers going away. You took them. Wally West then thinks back to the moment he returned from the Speed Force, feeling a little bit more power than usual, realizing that when Wally West exited the Speed Force, he actually drained Bart Allen's powers without knowing it. Inertia realizing this, he starts to say that he was powerless. That's how we were able to nail him. And you know what? He screamed like a little 
bitch. Wally West with tears in his eyes and anger in his heart thinks about multiple ways that he can kill Inertia right at this second. Just hearing how pleased Inertia is about the death of Bart Allen just drives Wally West's heart with so much rage. Just thinking about several ways he could spread Inertia's body parts all over the world like a bug on a windshield. But running around the world again in 10 seconds flat, he just thinks to himself that he's a kid a sick, corrupt clone of his cousin. He's an irredeemable sociopath with Bart's face. But because Inertia has Bart's face, it prevents Inertia from getting an otherwise brutal fucking death. Cut to a week later, Wally West meets up with Iris West Allen, and he attempts to apologize to Iris for the death of Bart Allen. But Iris then asks Wally, did he choose to come back? To which Wally would say no. Then Iris would ask, did you have any control of how or when it all happened? To which Wally would say no. So Iris would say, be more like Bart. Because Bart Allen never dwelled on anything that wasn't his fault, and so should Wally. But while talking about Bart Allen, she can't help but ask what happened to Inertia after Wally West's confrontation. To which Wally says that they'll never have to worry about Inertia ever again. Because Wally West stole his speed as punishment but it wasn't nearly enough. Because in the last second, Wally was so connected to the Speed Force that he could do so much more than slow him down. He immobilized him permanently. Setting him on a display in the Flash Museum, he's still conscious, he still sees and hears and thinks in real time, but he's trapped for eternity in a frozen body, forced to stare with eyes that take a hundred years to blink at the ghost of the man he could never be. And as for the other rogues, Let's just say they're not having a good time either. After Iris hears that Wally West avenged Bart Allen's death, Iris would just say to Wally that he has just one job now, and that is to take care of his family to the best of his abilities, and to spend every single moment you can with them, because you never know when you might lose them. I hope you all like that story, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you all on the flip side.